All right, so on the worksheet, again, just trying some of the evens here with you guys. So on number two, looking at that problem, they already told us in the directions that these are similar figures. <clears throat> we need to set up a proportion to solve. How could we do it? So, can somebody give me one way to solve this? All right. So, give me some of this setup. You say cross multiplication. You said 12 over 15 equals x over 25. Good. So we're setting it up so that we have some of the corresponding positions in the same fractions. And we took the top values were from the smaller figure. The bottom ones are from the bigger figure. So now we can cross multiply and solve. Now. There is one thing that I didn't talk about. I don't think I mentioned on the review. Did I mention anything about simplifying? Uh, no. Uh, no. So let, let's go ahead and talk about that here. I can cross multiply and solve right now. And if you're using a calculator, that's probably going to be the fastest way to do this problem. Just cross multiply and solve. Use your calculator. And it wouldn't be too difficult. So um, I don't have a calculator in front of me, but... This isn't too bad. We got 15 times x is 15x. 12 times 25 is 300. And then 300 divided by 15 is 20. So the numbers aren't too bad on this one to be done without a calculator either. But if this was on a non-calculator test, because again, remember at the end of the year, your test, your FSA, will be half calculator, half non-calculator, just like the algebra FSA was. So on this problem, there's a couple ways that you could make this a little bit easier. All right. When you have this first fraction that we did here, we could simplify it. So this would be 12 over 15 reduces down to what? 4 over 5. Because they both reduce by 3, right? Now, this value is actually our scale factor, or k, right? And you can use that instead of that first value. So we could set it up the same way, same way that we did before, just using our simplified scale factor instead. Cross, multiply, and solve. So again, that's one way you can keep the numbers a little bit smaller. Again, we could, we could stick with the method that we had just done, yeah. or you could do it this way. They both work. Because right. again, every time you set up that ratio between the two figures, that's your scale factor. So if you want to use your scale factor, you can. <coughs> All right. Um, let's go down to one that's a little bit different. So on number eight, number eight doesn't give us any of the other dimensions to use. But what they do give us is the scale factor. So since they gave us the scale factor, and it's saying this is the scale factor from A to B. So if I write this out as a proportion, I'd have two thirds is equal to A has the missing side X. B has the missing or has the side that they gave us was 12. It's the same idea. It's just they didn't give you any of the other parts. They're just starting you off with the scale factor. So it's the same application. So I was I forgot how to use the proportion for a second. So B has the variable on the bottom where it has it. It could be on the so like on the top one. There's many different ways you could have set up that proportion because as long as you have something in common vertically in both fractions and horizontally across the numerators and horizontally across the denominators, it should be a correct proportion that you could use to solve. Um, on this one, we are a little more limited because they tell us that this is from A to B. So our fraction is two-thirds. And then when we set this up, we have to do it from A 
to B. So we have to put A on top, B on bottom. Okay. So we're more limited on that one. On the top one, there's many different ways we could have set it up. Yeah. So does for A to B, so like let's say on number 10, you have to find the length of B, would you put X on the bottom now? So, yeah, yeah, of course. So on uh, number 10, since you're finding the part in B and it still says scale factor from A to B, your X would be on the bottom now because the B is the one that has the missing value. So it does matter. Yes, it does matter. Can you do number one? <clears throat> all, right, all right, let me finish. Let me finish this guy. So again, cross multiply on that one. You'd have three x equals twenty four. Divide by three, and x is eight. All right. And then Zoe, just to show you that one again. Since we're going the opposite way on this one, we still have from a to b, so it's still one over seven. And now seven is an a the question mark or x is in b so yes the x is now on the bottom for that one cross multiply and solve 49 equals x don't have to even divide anything on that one because one times x is just one x that's it because again we still went from a to b so on this one here's a it has a seven b is the one with the question mark so it's on the bottom this time Again, we just have to make sure we keep the order the same. All right? So if they have, if they have the A, B thing, then it's from A to B for sure? Yeah. Again, if I give you, if I give you a, any type of scale factor and say a scale factor from this to this, you got to make sure you use it in that order. I might not necessarily label figures A to B. I might say triangle ABC to triangle DEF. All right? But again, same idea. What was the one thing you want me to do? I can do one. Sure. All right, I'm going to set it up for you. I'm, I'm not going to do the whole problem. But now, remember, there's more than one correct way to set this up. Mm -mm. So, with our scale factor, that scale factor um, is a ratio between the two figures. And it's good for any single dimensional measurement. So, we could use it for top two pieces. If you use it on the sides, if you use it on the bottom sides, we don't have to, we don't have to combine any of these numbers or anything else. Later on in the year, we'll even see that the scale factor works for any other parts that we might draw in. So like altitudes, radii, all, all those other different single dimensional measurements, it applies to all, it even applies to perimeter. So on this one, just take two sides, match them up, take the other two sides, match them up, instead of a portion. So, Again, this is just an example of one proportion that would work. This isn't the only one that would work. So let's say I do 10 to 15 and X to 24. That's one proportion you could use to solve. Again, it's not the only one. I did it. <coughs> 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 All right. Um, different type of question. Go over to the back, go to question uh, that's 16. Yeah, I don't want to do your homework for you, so let's do 16. On 16, again, there are lots of ways that you can do this, right? Now, the numbers on this one are a little bit bigger. Remember, you could make them smaller by changing this into a scale factor. So. If you want to set it up as 18 over 24, let's say, and then do x minus 2 over 12, that would work. Again, this fraction that I had on this side could have been in any number of things. It would have been 27 over 36 as well. Now, you could also simplify one of these and actually find the scale factor first. So, like, if I did 18 over 24, that reduces down to what? Two thirds. Wait, no, not two thirds. Three fourths. Yeah. Three fourths. Divide both of those by six. That looks horrible now. Let's see. All right. So three fourths. So instead of doing these big numbers over here, we could do some smaller numbers. 
And if you're having to use algebra as well, like you are in this one, I highly recommend simplifying a little bit first because now our numbers are much smaller and it's not gonna be as hard to do. We still do this with cross multiplying. The only catch here is when you multiply four to this value up there, again, you gotta make sure you multiply it to everything. You're doing your distributive property when you multiply there. So four times X is four X. Four times negative two is negative eight. Three times 12 is 36. Again, use your properties to solve. Bring the eight over. Add eight, that gives us 44. Divide by four and you get 11. <clears throat> All right. Okay. All right. So those are the different types of problems that you can see that are on that sheet. Um, let's take a look at. I want to go back and take a look at a little bit of the homework from last night. Um, there's a couple of problems specifically that I wanted to go to. Wait, did I not assign that one? Wait, was that not on last night? Hold on. Maybe I didn't assign it. Did I, or did I do this? Did I do number nine in the notes yesterday? Any chance? There was a reflection problem. I wanted to go over that one. I don't remember. It was like a person looking at a reflection of a tree in a pond. I did? Okay, all right. I wanted to make sure I had done that one, and I, I guess I already did it. Sorry, my, my, my brain just isn't working very well right now. All right. <coughs> All right. So, let's take a look at some of the homework from last night. I think I may just end up collecting all the homework come tomorrow so that it's just easier for me to grade it all at once. Um, <coughs> but anyway. On, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'm, I'm just going to collect everything tomorrow. It'll be easier. <coughs> all right. On, let's see. Where were we? This is page two, uh, no, not two, uh, 320. That was homework? That was part of the homework? Yeah, this was the homework from last night. Now, some of the numbers, <coughs> some of the numbers weren't very nice, right? Some of them were decimals, but it didn't really matter. For that first question, number one, did they give you any angles whatsoever? No, no angles are listed there. Only the sides. So if this is going to be a similarity, we know that it would have to be by what? By side, side, side. But in order for that to work, what has to be true? Not congruent. Proportional. And I did it in their And they're not, you said? So now, you, you always have to be careful too on a problem like this because you have to make sure you're setting them up to the correct things that you're matching them up to the corresponding parts. So, on here, I would start with this, I always start with the smallest values and then work my way up to the biggest. So I like got this one, we got 3.8 and 5.4. Then the next biggest is six. Over here, the next biggest is nine. Then we have 7.5 and 11.25. Now, I'm pretty good at math. But just looking at decimals like that, that's hard to tell whether or not they're all equivalent. Yeah. So the easiest thing to do is just divide them and see what are the actual values. So you said 0.70. This is 0.6. Yeah, that's continuous. And this is another 0.66. So, 
Oh, this one wasn't continuous? I ended at 7. Okay. So, are these equal? No. No. So, are these going to be similar? No. All right. Now, there's other properties as well that we could use from earlier in the year to help us. Because now look at number 17. This is also a little bit different. On uh, number 17, you have two angles. Now, are those two angles congruent? No. But, unlike this last one where we set it all up and said, all right, these are not similar back there on number 16, right? Because they didn't equal. On number 17, just because those angles aren't equal, does that mean that these aren't similar? What do you have to do? So yeah, so on here, we had some missing measurements. This one, if you subtract those two from 80, you're left with 80. On this one, if you subtract those two from 180, you're left with 40. So are the angles congruent? Can you move it now? Yeah. Wait. Up. Was that not on the screen? It was like half the Okay. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, since once you solve for that other missing angle, they are congruent. That means that we can say that these are similar by what? By AA similarity theorem. Now, that was a. Now, I will also ask you on the test to write a similarity statement. So, although it didn't ask us to do that here, let's go ahead and practice. What is our similarity statement for these two triangles? So, let's say I give you the first one as JKL. What order would I then have to go in for the next figure? Why that order? Yeah, because that's the order that the angles are congruent in. So, J was 60, P was 60, K was 80, Q was 80. L was 40, R was 40. Again, they're in that corresponding order. Right. <coughs> All right. All right. Let's let's do one more. I can't I can't go through all these today. My I'm just not feeling good. Um, on number 19. What is FG? So, on this one, first off, is there enough information to say that those two triangles are similar? Yes. Yes. Again, you have to make sure that there is enough information before you start a problem like this. Now, they might just say in the directions, these, all the following figures are similar. Right? But you can't really ever assume it unless you either are told they're similar or have enough information to say they're similar. Here... We have two angles in each that are congruent, so these must be similar. So now, since we know they're similar, we know how they match up, and we can go ahead and set up a proportion. <coughs> so, four-fifths is going to be equivalent to, I'm going to call that side XG, X for now, over 3.5. Again, you might have to deal with some decimals. Cross, multiply, and solve. 5 times x is 5x. 4 times 3.5. 14, you said, right? I think 14, because think of it this way. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 0.5 is 2. Add those together, that's 14. And then finally, divide by 5. And that's going to give us two point. Wait, two point what? Wait, oh, okay. I thought you said two point nine. I was like, yeah, two point eight. That'd be two and four fifths, or two point eight. All right. 
Any questions on how to do those types of problems? Again, there will also be some questions that are based off of like the vocab that we did on that first day, you know, so make sure you take a look back at some of that vocab. Um, there's, let me, let me grab the other worksheet here. problems again in every single one of these things we are dealing with similar triangles is there any anybody have a preference as to which one I do with you we do one 23 all right now I have room to write next to these problems so I'm gonna use a sticky note there um, and also, just to let you know, I will post videos again for this like I normally would for a review day, but I'm probably not going to be able to talk a lot. So I'll probably just be me doing the work, not really talking through it too much. All right. Um, <laughs> you just don't like hearing my voice, huh? It's messed up. I don't like hearing your sick voice. Mr. Things, second, 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 <clears throat> Shh, guys. This is the last one I'm doing. Come on. All right, 23. The scene of a surveying device. This sorry, the screen, not the scene. The screen of a surveying device is 0 0.0026 meters wide and is 0.1 meters away from the lens. If the surveyor wants the image of the two meter target to fit on the screen, what distance D should the lens be from the target? Explain. So, on here, this is going into a little bit of photography, but essentially, this is making a triangle, right? Let me, let me just draw this across here. So that's two meters across currently. Oh, up here, we have the other half of what's going on. We have another triangle that's being formed that's going to be similar to the original. And we can pretty much tell how they're going to be similar because we have those angles that be vertical angles, so they're going to be congruent. And these are also making isosceles triangles here, so it doesn't really matter which when you look at this, but normally we would, we would say that the alternate interior angles are congruent and stuff, but you can kind of tell how they're matching up. Now, since we know the distance to the lens, that's kind of the focal point at which the image is getting flipped. So we have uh, 1, 0.1 meters away, so we can set up a proportion. Now, there's more than one correct way to set up this proportion. All right. For most of these figures, I normally would have done something like this. Um, D over the part that would match up to D is going to be the height of that one. So 0.1 meters equals. And then the other part of this figure we need to know is the two meters. So two meters. And that width matches up with this width of 0 0.0026 meters. Now, 
cross multiply and solve. All right. So when you cross multiply and solve here, 0.1 and 2 becomes 0.2. This becomes 0 0.0026 times D. And all we have left to do is divide off the 0 0.0026, which is... Seventy six point say zero nine three. Uh oh, wow, well, I, I heard you way wrong. Say that again. Seventy six point nine two nine two three, that's good. Nine two three. Yeah, that will also be in meters. Now there are many ways to set up that proportion. There's also many ways to do the math in order to solve this. For example, we got our correct answer, right? I'm just going to show you one last thing where I could have done this a little bit faster. And this would be true anytime my variable is on the top. Really, if you just treat this as, I want to get D by itself. Remember what I said yesterday. Cross multiplying is really just the same thing as our multiplication property of equality. So here, if I wanted to get D by itself, I could just multiply off that point 0.1. All of my values now are already over here on one side of the problem. So if you have a calculator, you're just doing 2 divided by 0 0.0026 times 0 0.1 and you'd have your answer so again remember in math there's more than one way to do things just because you know cross multiplying is one way of solving it doesn't mean it's always the best way because again cross multiplying is essentially doing your your um, multiplication property of equality twice Sometimes it's easier to do it once. Because sometimes it's making more work for you when cross multiply. Again, just throwing that out there. Either way, you get the same answer. All right. I'm done. You know your assignment. I'll post answers and stuff later.